The children are playing with their new toys. Oh, I'm trying to hit a song. You over there sucking on your foot. Leave that fucking foot alone! broke the family told michael of plans they had for an upcoming jackson family television special revolving around an achievement award that would be given to certain celebrities okay we remember this from reading peggy's book peggy you know uh what's her name margaret maldonado uh jermaine jackson's baby mammy not Randy's baby mammy, but the other one. Not Hazel either, but the other one. Again, it was Jermaine's concept. Michael was clear. He wanted no misunderstandings about it. He wanted just limited participation in the special. The best they could expect of him was that he might give out an award and sit in the audience. In a manner so typical of Jackson family business, there was a great deal of back and forth about Michael's participation. And at one point he wanted to back out altogether. Now with the family coming forth with their support at this difficult time in his life, he felt as if he was being backed into a corner where the program was concerned. How could he disappoint them after they'd been so publicly loyal? Lisa Marie Presley, daughter of rock and roll trailblazer Elvis Presley, had known Michael Jackson since 1974. The two met in Las Vegas during one of the Jackson family's engagements at the MGM Grand. Lisa was six, Michael was 16. Elvis brought her to see the show because she was a big fan of the group. I also liked him, Lisa Marie, who prefers to be called Lisa, recalled, Michael fascinated me with his talent. I loved watching him dance. He wanted to know me better, but I always thought he was sort of freakish. I didn't really want to know him any better than I already did. Born on February 1st, 1968, to Elvis and Priscilla Presley, Lisa Marie was destined for controversy just by virtue of her illustrious lineage. She had a privileged childhood her father lavished her with gifts in february of 1993 lisa and michael were brought together again at a private dinner in the los angeles home of artist brett livingston stone a mutual friend at this time lisa had recorded four songs produced by her husband she felt she had a lot to say about her unusual life as daughter of an icon and was looking for a way to say it through her lyrics and music. I had a voice, she once told me, in retrospect, but I didn't have the experience. Things always got too wild when people found out that Elvis's daughter wanted to sing. It became a matter of deals and money, money, money. I lost my fire for it. I was scared, I guess, so I pulled back. She had no confidence in herself as a vocalist, said Brett Livingston Stone. She was afraid of being compared to Elvis, afraid of rejection. When I suggested that Michael could help her, she said, he's a superstar. Do you really think he'd help me? After dinner at my house, Lisa played tapes of some of her music and Michael was blown away. He told her, you have a real talent, a fine voice. You could be a star. Let me see what I can do for you. In days to come, Michael and Lisa forged a surprising friendship, speaking on the telephone nearly every day. They realized that they shared the same kind of background. Both had been sheltered and protected from the real world. Both felt they had missed out on their childhoods. He truly was misunderstood, he told her. I know you think I'm gay, he said, but I'm not. I get tired of people thinking I'm gay, but oh well, fuck them. I know you have heard a lot of things about me, in fact. 
he continued, but most of it isn't true. And the stuff that is true, you shouldn't hold against me. He winked at her. Hey, I'm a married woman, Lisa said, and you're coming on to me. Yes, but are you happy? Michael asked. No. See, Michael remarked, I knew that. You look like a woman who needs to let go and has some fun. Michael Jackson is telling Lisa Marie Presley to let go and have some fun? Michael, girl. You look like a woman who needs to hook up with me. Now, I don't know if this is actually Michael Jackson's behavior or he's putting on because of what's happening to him right now. I still think that their relationship was about timing, you know, whether he was Michael Jackson or not, because when it comes down to men, everything is about timing. All right. Lisa was unable to disguise her surprise at his candor and his dot, dot, dot normality. She recalled staring at him thinking, who is this man? She was right to be perplexed. He sure wasn't acting like the Michael Jackson others had known over the years. It was as if he had taken macho lessons from Joseph. Lisa recalled, I thought to myself, wow, this guy is a real guy. He swears, he's funny, I told him. Dude, if people knew who the hell you really are, they would be so surprised. Or he just took macho lessons from Joseph. But let me tell you one thing that I did notice. In a picture that was taken on a set of Thriller, he had his arm thrown around Ola Ray, very cavalier and masculine. It made me think, damn, Michael Jackson kind of looks sexy with his arm thrown around Ola Ray like that. Like, he might throw you down, put you down. Now, he ain't, I mean, he, he ain't big enough to throw you down or... Put you down but i mean it looks kind of sexy as far as lisa was concerned she and michael were dating and her motive was to see where it could take her romantic most people in his circle though were not as certain as to his motives for being with lisa though he did seem to like her there was talk that he was after her money which was ludicrous absolutely positively fucking ludicrous let me tell you something michael jackson has so much goddamn money that his great 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 grandkids is going to be good he is dead in the ground or in a tomb or you know ashes somewhere spread it about but that ninja still make more money in the ground than most of us will ever see in our entire lifetime Okay. As Elvis's sole beneficiary, Lisa would come into a fortune of about $300 million, but not until she turned 30. Most of Lisa's money would be the result of the savvy Priscilla Presley's business acumen. While Elvis had roughly earned $250 million in his life, by the time he died, his estate was valued at $5.4 million. It was his ex-wife Priscilla who turned Elvis's failing Presley Enterprises around to make a profit. Turning Elvis's 14-acre estate, Graceland, purchased by him in 1957 into a tourist attraction in 1982, was one stroke of genius on her part. It brought in 20 million a year. Throughout 1993, during the time Michael seemed obsessed with Jordy Chandler, he was dating Lisa intermittently. When the molestation allegations surfaced in his life, however, Michael's relationship with Lisa became a more urgent matter to him. Ironically, if not for Jordy's accusations and the ensuing scandal, he and Lisa may never have become anything more than just friends. Agreed. It's always about timing with men. I don't care what kind of man you are. It's always about timing. Women, we can always be ready to love and nurture. Not me. Not me. I can't. I don't. I'm not always ready. Lord knows I'm not always ready. Men, if you catch them at the right time, honey. That's right, Lulu. Honey. You can just about get them to do anything. If not for Jordy's accusations and the ensuing scandal, he and Lisa may never have become anything more than just 
friends, a coupling similar to the innocuous non-sexual romances he had with Brooke Shields and Tatum O'Neill. I don't know what he did to Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields is still madly in love with him. Maybe be, Michael might have had that top piece that might have been off the hook now. You know, all I know. I mean, Virgos are perfectionists. And baby, let me say something. When they going down on you, they perfecting whatever mission they trying to accomplish when they down there, blink. So that might have been what Brooke Shields was dealing with. Now, Tatum O'Neill was way too young for him to even think about, you know, sucking on her. That's ridiculous. However, after Michael began the second leg of his dangerous tour and the investigation intensified, he began to depend on Lisa for emotional support, telephoning her from overseas, seeming desperate and alone during such anguished calls Lisa would attempt to counter his sadness with humor, cheerfulness, and good advice. As he grew to depend upon her, their relationship strengthened. I was in on the beginning of the Olestation stuff, and I was getting the phone calls, and he was telling me that it was extortion, she recalled. I believed him at the time. I mean, I was convinced. He was freaking out. I believed that he didn't do anything wrong and that he was being wrongly accused. And yes, I started falling for him. I wanted to save him. I felt that I could do it. See what I'm saying? In the midst of all the turmoil, there was some good news for Michael Jackson when he heard that Elizabeth Taylor and her husband, Larry Fortinsky, would be joining him in Singapore, his next tour stop, to lend their emotional support and celebrate his 35th birthday with him. Many people have wondered about Michael's relationship with Elizabeth, thinking it an unlikely friendship. Not me. As soon as I found out that she was a Pisces and then one of y'all and the comments said that Michael is a Virgo sun, uh, Pisces moon and rising. I said, oh yeah. To me, the best compatibility for a Virgo would be a Cancer or a Pisces. Yeah, it, it, just, it just works. Many people have wondered about Michael's relationship with Elizabeth, thinking it an unlikely friendship. However, they actually have a great deal in common and much more than just having been child stars. Like Elizabeth, Michael has known loneliness. He has lived in fear of not being able to fully love and of not having love returned. Michael once explained to me that he and Elizabeth first met in the early 1980s. Paul. You know who, who are very similar to me? Aretha Franklin and Elizabeth Taylor have very similar love interactions. You know, like they're always chasing love, but that shit don't be working. Out of the blue, he had sent her a dozen tickets to one of his Los Angeles concerts at Dodger Stadium. I didn't know it, but it was her birthday, February 27th, Michael recalled. I thought I was giving her great seats because they were in the VIP box. But when Elizabeth got there, she became very angry because the seats were so far away from the stage and she left upset. The whole time I was performing, I was thinking, oh my God, Elizabeth Taylor is watching me. Elizabeth Taylor is watching me, but she wasn't even there. When I got off stage, they told me she had gone home mad. The next day I called her and I cried because I felt so awful. According to Michael's memory, Elizabeth was cordial, but direct. Michael, she said, a major star such as myself never sits in cheap seats. Cheap seats? Child, after that we, cheap seats, hold on. She was in, she was, she was in the VIP box. Girl, that damn Elizabeth Taylor is a mess. You say that you know.